Hello, hello, and welcome back to Kim Talks. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, and this is where we share stories and insight with resilient women from around the world. Um, and if you need any further information on this, always give me a shout out. But before we dive in today, I do want to give a quick shout out to queensofresilience.shop. That's queensofresilience.shop. This is our online store. We have lots of fun things, you know, a bit sassy. We got the queen hustle going on in there. So do check it out. That's queensofresilience.shop. So today's guest, um, I really felt quite connected to when I first met her. And I'm really looking forward to you listening in and learning about her journey and what she's doing. And maybe there'll be a connection where you can actually step and help support this journey she's on. Dr. Kelly has 35 years of professional experience with countless generations of traumatized families as a PhD registered nurse, marriage and family therapist, nationally certified trauma and resilience therapist, certified legal nurse consultant, and co-founder of Josephine's Clinic, a nonprofit serving those who have experienced human trafficking and violence. Through personal and professional and volunteer experiences, she discovered the key ingredient to healing trauma in children, adults, couples, and families, and is now the author of an upcoming book, Beyond Trauma Drama, Cultivating the Sacred Nature of Families to Heal. From her earliest childhood, Dr. Kelly Bonhoff experienced a deep devotion to vulnerable children, teens, adults, and families. She expresses herself best through speaking and writing, sharing her knowledge about the power that each of us has not only to heal ourselves, but our children, families, relationships, communities, and what the heck, the world. So I am super excited to dive into, especially a resilience therapist. This sounds like a gal, like I said, right up my alley. So everybody, please welcome Dr. Kelly. Bonhoff. Hello, hello, Dr. Kelly. How are you? Hey, Kim. So great to be here. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Um, like I said, we met and there was something that really resonated with what you were sharing. And I think I work, I tend to work mostly in the world of female entrepreneurship. Right. But if you aren't healthy, it's very hard to become wealthy. Right. So it literally all flows together. And women, we're, that's how we roll. That's who we are. <laughs> so share with us first a little bit about who you are. Well, who I am. Well, at my heart, I am the oldest child born in the 60s in North Texas and um, four kids. So oldest of four. And the 1960s was a great time to grow up. Um, in that time, though, there was, I would call it an opportunity to build some resilience and navigate through a journey of uh, childhood adversity. So I had three important jobs when I was little. The first was to keep my mother healthy, which is where the nursing came from, to keep my siblings safe which is where some of the other adversity came from, and to keep my father happy. And as the six of us, mom, dad, and the four of us were navigating our journey of adversity, what I discovered was a lot of things about myself and a lot of things in the world that I realized I would prefer to experience. So the journey started with one question. And the first question that I had from my earliest memory was, why is it that children are being hurt by those who are meant to love them and keep them safe? And so as I was a little girl navigating my way, moving 16 times in 17 years and having those responsibilities, what I began to do, I have this voracious appetite for knowledge. So I'm a combination of Inspector Gadget, Curious George, and Pac-Man on crack. That is the way that I would describe myself as who. And so 
when you're reading the introduction, I realized there were there are a lot of letters, there are a lot of certifications, but it's because I had this feeling that I needed to open a lot of doors in order to find the answer to that very important question. And I learned a lot along the way. So who am I? I'm just really at heart a little girl who had experiences that led her to wonder about a better way of being in the world. And I really just wanted to discover the answer to that question. Well, and I think you just hit upon something, uh, a little girl, right? I don't think, I believe that no matter how old we grow, we grow, we still have that child within and be it the negative or the positive. Um, right. And it is interesting how you pull that. We will maybe dive into the Pac-Man on crack. By the way, I have to say, <laughs> is that your real backdrop? Are those really your books? Because are you are you gonna are you are you gonna ask me to pull the mystery about my background out? Is so. this because these books are just slaying it? As a professional <laughs> home designer or uh, uh, stager, I'm looking at your books, going. That is that is that a backdrop or is that real? All right, you're gonna hear it is a backdrop. It is killer. I you know I, I, love hear, it I couldn't too. tell. I, I love it too. Tell. Me too. Thank you for bringing that out though, Kim. So okay, sorry, yeah. I totally <laughs> I sewn up the gal you take out to dinner because it's like I anything and everything's out there. Okay, so let's dive in. Just so you know, um, at least I could pronounce everything in your uh bio i had and i still can't say this what is the art of what is the study of studying the pedagogical pedagogalist ped, ped, you know I i'm sure know. there's a great word for it but here's there my actually, word for it you know what, my, a degree for it and i can't great, pronounce it <laughs> okay here's 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 the answer to the question what is the word for studying of the thing of the law and here's what i want to say the word for me is fun there you go there you go. I, you know what? I'll take that. So share with us a little bit about what you do. We do know that you're going to share with us your book a little bit later, but until we get to your book, share with me what has led up to the expertise, the authority that you are now able to move forward and publish your, your, your knowledge. Yeah. So with it's, it's tremendously a joyful story in the sense of the resiliency um, actually came through uh, me getting to a point where many of us do, which was the, 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 the last of the last of the last. So my physical health was failing. My emotional and psychological health was failing. Uh, obviously, during the pandemic, I was still out in the world assisting traumatized children and families and We'd meet in parks and we'd walk in the rain and, you know, there was all this going on. But um, moment by moment, and I've, I've been healing for many, for decades, but I came to that point where my mental, psychological and emotional uh, and physical started to deteriorate. And then uh, my husband and I hit that distress button. And the combination of all of those at once brought me to a point where I realized I've tried a lot of things to get to a point of wellness and well-being, but I'm missing something. I can't figure out what it is. And so one day I tried something new and it was the Chinese traditional medicine of acupuncture. And when I went into the acupuncture for the very first time, I opened every energy center in my body and went into 12 days of what we call a healing crisis, which was all of that repressed and toxic subconscious stuff that we get involved in. Um, it just came barreling out into my being. And I had a dream. I had a spiritual awakening where I went through that beautiful, and I love the Wizard of Oz, but I ended up going through <laughs> this beautiful, vivid dream where there's a, a wall as long as you can see and as high as you can see. And I was, you know, Humpty Dumpty at the bottom. And I'm like, I think I'm done. I'm going to take the exit. And there was this beautiful soft voice that said, just stand up and walk through the wall. 
And I thought, well, I haven't been drinking today, so I should, I don't think that's it. So let me go ahead. And so I literally just stood up and I said, are you sure? And the boy said, yes, everything's fine. And when I walked through that wall, it was just like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz going from black and white straight into Technicolor. And what that dream did for me is it gave me an opportunity to begin a journey. This happened last March and it opened up this spiritual door that I had never walked through before. And so since that time, I'm completely healed physically and emotionally. And I've just had the best time figuring out what in the world is going on with this spiritual lens through which our families, there's been this lost knowledge for the sacredness of our families and just how badass we all are being here on the earth. And we're just making this beautiful turn. So the way I describe this is we are not broken. We are becoming the greatest expression of love we have ever known. And so in all of the families and in my own family of origin as well, what I noticed is that we, along the way, adopted a belief that said something like, we're just too hurt to heal. There have been too many things that have happened in the generations of our family. And we're just going to gut this thing out until we all take our exit. And it's something I finally realized was something called the merry-go-round of survival. And we've got, many of us just don't even know we're on the merry-go-round. So this is one of the doorways that, that came open to me that wasn't open before. And so what am I doing now? What I'm doing is I am having the best time um, and I, in childlike wonder. It was something, Kim, in my lifetime, I never thought I could feel whatever someone else said was joy or peace or happiness. And this childlike wonder business and this ability to see the world and families and myself and children, no matter what the adversity, all I see, all I can feel now is this sense of well-being that we're all turning into. And the book is just a new way of seeing the adversity and restoring the childlike wonder in our families. Um, and I could not be more humbled and more thankful to have found this doorway because you see it came from the inside out and to have found it um, more than half a century of my life went by 56 years before the dream but what i will tell you is that it gave me a, an opportunity to explore everything i ever wanted to be do or have and now i know that every moment I can have the heaven on earth. And I want for every family who can hear these words to feel the resonance of that truth. And so the book is unfolding through the beauty of that infinite intelligence and love that is running straight through my heart, my core. And so now the inner child, the child of my youth is now playing and she is super excited um, to be here with you and, and with this new information, which is really old information, but just lost information. So I can't wait to bring it out and have people talk about it. We are not broken. We are becoming. That is, that is a t-shirt. That is a bag. That is to be written on people's mirrors. That is actually really powerful. It, it goes along the lines of, you know, Edison, every time he blew something up, it was not a failure. It was feedback. Um, we're human beings. We're fallible and it's allowed. It's allowed. Uh, I find it fascinating. You mentioned Wizard of Oz. I'm from Kansas, and that's actually I've got the red ta red shoes tattooed on my foot, and and oh. I believe uh, Glenda the Good Witch actually says, "But Dorothy, you've always had the answers within you," and I think that's what you're really talking about is that the answers are within each of us. Uh, I'm also the eldest of four kids, so I just too many coincidences here. Um, I find that we cannot get to the levels of success that we are wishing for until we address the challenges of which we fight our, our own interior selves on. Um, I'm 
personally, I feel very blessed to feel like I, I like I said to somebody the day, I really feel like I could, if I checked out tomorrow, I feel like I've served the purpose of which I've been sent here for. Because I woke up at 27 and I remember waking up at 27 after literally not sleeping the first 27 years of my life due to childhood trauma and waking up going, I know why I'm here. Now, I'm a few years behind on the financial uh, fundraising because at that time, 2750 is really old. Well, I mean, what's the likelihood <laughs> I'm going to ever be 50? Well, now at 53, I'm sitting there going, time's ticking. I know what I need to do. I just got to figure out how to do it. So get more creative. But um, so, you know, I, lo I love the fact that you said we're not broken. We are becoming. And what you're becoming is that that next level. We call these our wisdom years. Mm. And I talked to a gal who was a she was a uh, counselor for court appointed counselor for girls through sexual trauma in the state of Kansas. One of the one of the most um, uh, she took the worst, the hardest cases. And yes. I was talking to her the other day and she spent her 50s and 60s traveling and teaching and everything she had learned in the, the previous 30 years. And this is a woman who came from wealth, had a very well-to-do husband. She did not have to do this job. She did not have to deal with girls who had gone through suicide and families that were, you know, so broken and and. And, and people, adults that were so broken. And yet she she took pride to step forward and say, I'll speak for that person, right? I'll speak for that person, right. judge. I will stand up here. I will protect this child. And you're doing a bit of that yourself through, like Josephine's, tell me a little bit about what Josephine's clinic is. I'd like to know that charity. What is that? Sure. So what transpired there is a, uh, I was a professor of nursing at Xavier University, creating a dual degree program in criminal justice and forensic nursing. And one of my doctoral students came to me and said, um, Dr. Kelly, we've got human trafficking happening within five miles of the university. And I said, there's no way that that can be true. And she said, yeah, come on down. So we went to a small church not far from the university where Women of Alabaster, which is a, a mission-oriented uh, group, took women in um, and helped them during the day with food and, and clothing and all kinds of manner of things. And so Roseanne and I went in and I met a young woman who was 28, who had obviously been on her feet for days, who was dehydrated and just, I thought for sure she had a broken arm and a broken jaw. And there had been this discussion about the difference between prostitution and trafficking. But what I will say to you is, as I sat with her as a trauma therapist, although I am a nurse as well, I said to her, hi, um, you look as if you may need some support and we may need to get you to the emergency room because I believe you may have a concussion and really just worried about you. And Kim, she looked at me in the eyes and as someone who understands energy and suffering, she said, I would rather die than go to an emergency room. And in that moment, I knew that we were missing something as it related to the love and care of women specifically that we were, we were there with um, and that there was a gap somewhere. And when I asked her more about it, she said, I just, I don't, they don't treat me kindly. I feel like an object and I just have been in and out of there so much and I just don't want to go. And so Josephine's clinic was created in that moment as we began to have more information about the women who have experienced those things. Now I was led there, which I didn't realize at that time because what I recognized in the women that I was able to be with as a therapist was that I had also experienced trafficking in childhood and I had not realized it. So I believe that Josephine's Clinic was the next step in my own understanding of my own path. But also what the women did was they helped me to have much more clarity around how these types of adversity happen in our families, within our families. And, um, and then how do we then provide safe, loving, secure, unconditional, loving care 
and resiliency and all of that, if they do not trust the person in front of them, then their suffering does continue. And so Josephine's Clinic provides with Women of Alabaster just a really little clinic place where they can talk to some mental health mentor and have some just basic medical care. But mostly what we provide is that sacred space for them to feel seen, loved, heard, and understood regardless of what they have experienced up to that moment. And so it's the sacred space that I realized was the most powerful thing we could provide, even on top of whatever else they may need. So that's how that started. And these, these are really critical to have these um, stepping stones. It's like you're going through a marsh and everything is uneven you don't know what you're going to step on there's there's thorns and there's you know maybe bogs and things like this you need to see that stone and that's that stone that gives you that next step on your journey and i i find that women like yourself and facilities like uh josephine's these are these are these spaces these are these those stones they may not quote unquote fix everything but they may lead to that next step of human decency. I personally believe, and I've said this to everybody, that there are four things to separate human beings from animals, education, medication, food, and shelter. And it sounds to me as if you're, you're on a quest of almost all four of those. Yes. Really giving back humanity, giving back a piece. I, I meet a lot of women because, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm very pro the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And I want to put as much money into those hands as possible. And that's my quest is, is I, I've i always been an entrepreneur since that very first uh, Girl Scout cookie that I've sold. But I found <laughs> that a lot of times I'm, I'm meeting these women who are in their 40s and uh, 40s and 50s who have incredible potential and yet there's a piece that's still broken within because they haven't healed i mean because the statistics are the here's the stats so most people i love my stats uh most people think it happens to somebody else but the reality is reported and this is reported and we know how this goes how many times have you actually hit somebody's car door and you're like Okay, didn't leave a mark. Quick, quick, let's go, right? Come on, I'm not the only one guilty of this. So, but 25% of all women are reported to have been preyed upon at some point in time before their 18th birthday. And when you strip away control, that base level control and identity, at some point in time, that does affect the value of which we operate forward in our and and and, I, and I, it's fascinating because i find that for a lot of these women in the 40s and 50s what is blocking their ability to go next level in their life be it financially emotionally whatever it is like you said it's that little girl within it's that little girl it within. is it is and so what i noticed is it's an it's an energy thing so we leave, we live in a vibrational universe so what I didn't understand I was doing when I was a little girl and what I didn't necessarily understand I was doing at Josephine's clinic for quite some time because I didn't have language about it was holding the sovereignty, the actual infinite intelligence, the power that we are, that we were born with, and to resonate that directly straight into their experience so that when they wonder, what is that tingling in my head or what is that feeling of safety or is that actually love that I'm feeling? Is that joy that I'm feeling? Because one of the things in my own personal experience was I had dissociated and repressed and suppressed and medicated and addicted myself straight into alcoholism to numb myself down. So one of the things in the book I say is, to feel or not to feel, that is the question. And we, unless we have the opportunity to feel, and I mean feel it, I mean understand what your body is saying to you in the feeling of fear, yes, of course, we're familiar with that. 
but where is the joy feeling? Where is the love feeling? And so that was what that dream did for me and acupuncture. It opened the energy centers to allow that true energy, power, love, uh, empowerment, not disempowerment, not powerlessness. Now I had something to compare it to. And once I got a whiff of that true power, then I could nurse it. I could pay attention to it and where attention goes, energy flows. And so I just turned into the direction of the powerful being that I am and have always been. So it's that lost knowledge and it's really giving people who have had um, patterns of beliefs that lead them to believe that they're just going to have to get their way through life, that the power of unconditional love that we all are, see, that's the highest vibration and people can't help but feel it in the vicinity of, of those of us who have awakened to it. So that's the secret ingredient. It is um, discovering that inner beingness and power that we have and then you own the absolute hell out of it and then you nurse it and then you and then you just oh my god it's it is something that you have to experience because words don't teach but what we want to give to people is an opportunity to see that through each of our journeys as we find it as we own it as we hone it as we deliver it as we love it it just echoes into the world. And that is what we're here for. There is an old proverb, an old way back when, that says, if you know something, but you do not share it, did you really know it? <laughs> it's great. Uh, and, and, and I love how you are owning it, choosing to share it, no matter what anybody says. I, I, you know, I know that when we talk about generational trauma, when we talk about all these things. The reality is it is uncomfortable for those yes. who are not aware. Of course. Right. I, it took me, I have literally been speaking in high level about my childhood for probably about 10 years. Um, for five years, I have been able to speak about my child without crying. I still hiccup. I still feel it. That little girl will always feel it. Um, and I've been able to, to I, I love the fact that Brene Brown talks about letting go of the shame. Not yours. Not yours. Not mine. You know? Now, I wish I could do that with the 30 pounds I gained over uh, over. COVID, but that one is mine. But the reality is everything else, let go. Like, like I love how you're just saying, releasing it and claiming the true energy that was always there. That yes. piece of you that was there before the world came in and layered upon it. It's, it's shame and it's uh, uh, preconceived, poorly conceived uh, uh, considerations as to who or what is your fault or who you, or what you should be. So, um, folks, before we dive into Dr. Kelly's why, and I think I think we will all say that this is going to be very interesting, getting a little bit of the why story here, why she does what she does, please do take a moment uh, to go and like, subscribe, comment, and share. We are on every platform from iTunes to YouTube, and uh, your support is as simple as checking a box. I promise you this. I will not bombard you with 40 emails a day trying to upsell you into vitamins. But please, <laughs> all I will do is ask you to be the amazing human being you are. Just share a little bit of your energy, show a little bit of your love, like, subscribe, comment, and share. So we can keep these comments or these conversations, just keep them moving forward. All righty? So, Back to us, back to you, Dr. Kelly. So this is huge. This is huge. And so few people get to this level. That's why um, it's so important to speak up. I, I'm, a, I'm a very firm believer. Um, if you can speak up, you need to speak up because there are others that are waiting for you to speak on their behalf. And I love that you are speaking up 
but tell me why you're going down this because this does take energy. It does take energy. A person who feels deeply will feel both the positive and the negative when it comes. And then you've got to deal with the negative and you got to channel that, move that through and get it going so you can stay within your space of positivity and stay within that space where you can help others. Tell me why. It's It was the reason why I came. It was the reason to, to dive deep into this type of adversity, to come through it, to learn about it, to hit the highs, to hit the lows. So the idea of our human nature and our sacred nature, finding that balance, how to make sense of these very complex family constellations. I consider families to be stars, constellations. I see them as energy. I see each each one just, you know, on their way, trying to um, close that gap in the distance between their human and sacred nature. And that our families, um, what I know is that we all kind of came in here together to help each other evolve into that beautiful, best loving version that we could be. And so seeing it through that lens is very important. The other thing is I have a healing team around me. I always have. It's not. This is not something I'm doing alone. And with the four generations of the family that I do have myself that is going through this healing process that I talk about in the book, what I notice is as we have learned to understand, well, what is sacred space to us? What is it we all can talk about? What is it? And we've cried and we've had our moments. What I'm noticing, though, is there is now a safety and a sacredness around conversation. So the courage um, that it takes to say um, in this generation to heal um, the ones of us that are still here on the earth, but to also know that our ancestral trauma is being um, also energetically healed is very exciting. So why now? Because there is a lot of great things happening on the earth. We've got a huge turn in consciousness. We've got uh, five dimensional energy coming around. And here's what I think has happened, Kim. I think you and I and all of our families in the world wanted to be here for the great um, age of awakening, the, the turn that humanity is taking. And I know in my heart that it feels a little bit cray cray out there with the chaos and all the things we're seeing. <laughs> But, but here's what I want you to know, as, as within, so without, in you know, the microcosm, the macrocosm, had I not had my own chaos, my own purification, my own inner guidance system coming online, my own inner child finding her truth, listen, we're just doing this at, at, at the level of humanity. And so all of our families are a bunch of rock stars because what we've been trying to figure out is what we do not want and who we are not in order to know what we do want and who we truly are. So what is going on with our families? I'll tell you what's going on. They wanted a front row seat to the greatest show on earth right now, which is the awakening of the consciousness of humanity. And we should be proud to be here. And as everyone is trying to get a sense of this, some of us are, are you know, a little farther distance from our sacredness than others, but that's okay because that, when we look at it from that direction, we just realize we're all just heading in the same direction. So why now? Well, I woke up when I woke up the way I was meant to wake up. And what I have now is more energy than I've ever had. And I just want to take this party to the next stage. I, I want to bring this message to families who believe they are too broken. They're in too, too much of a survival mode and they can't dig their way out of this crap. And I want to say to them, baloney, baloney. You are one moment of now away from turning toward everything you have ever wanted. And for me, there were three things. I wanted love. I wanted freedom and I wanted joy and I wanted all of them all the time and every moment. And I want you to know, found it. And now it's my responsibility to hold it and to share it and to love it into the next greatest expansion that that can be. So there's no stopping us now. There's no stopping us now. We're making the turn. And I want every family to know it. I want every person to know it. And whatever childhood anybody has had, I want them to know that they are more powerful and more loving and more whole and more well-being. They can't even imagine it. 
and I want them to hear it. And I want these words to resonate with whoever is meant to hear this podcast. So that's why. Wow, there's a lot there to unpack, like honestly, a second episode to unpack, um, because there is a lot of people, like you said, right now, there's a lot of families that are sitting in fear. Yes. And, 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 and the, the truth is, our social media preys upon that. That's how they get their, their engagement. That's uh, the human brain goes to fear before it goes to, you know, positivity. So the, it, it's not surprising um, that we have a lot of people running around chicken little skies falling and, and it's good that there are people like yourself. That's like, I'll hold up the sky. You just like, <laughs> when you feel like it, join me over here. I'm holding up the sky. We're okay. Right. Um, share with me a time in your life that without resiliency, you wouldn't be here having this discussion. Well, it had to have been when I was 15, um, drunk out of my mind in a car with other people, other kids in the car in a field driving backwards at 100 miles an hour. And there were several times in my life where I wanted to take the exit pretty bad and was just asking the universe to just go ahead and take me out. However, the universe did intervene and I did wake up the next day. And there was something, um, how I would say, uh, an, an energy, a feeling, if you think about, you know, you have your own guardian angel or whatever. And there was something that kind of whispered that I, in my, you know, drunken stupor, I was thinking, well, am I having a hallucination or is this something? But there was something about this beautiful, it felt like, like angel wings were putting their arms around me and it just whispered, you're all right. Everything's all right. And so I took a deep breath and I just got up that day and I did all the things I were, I was supposed to do in a responsible way, but it felt like in that moment I had been kissed on the cheek by a butterfly, like, like love had found me for a moment. And I chose to move in the direction of that feeling. And so for me, it's one of the most vivid points of time in my youth specifically um, where if you can pay attention to those glimpses and glimmers, resiliency surrounds us, creation surrounds us, love surrounds us. And all we have to do is turn our focus away from the social media and the TV and the five senses and the toxic and the dysfunctional just long enough for that beautiful angel's kiss to get your attention. And so that would be the example that would come to mind for me. I think you and I have a very similar because I was 15 when I when when things started happening for me. So you know that I just knew it was it was I I was a child even know, knowing that there was I was put here for a reason. I was put here for a reason. What is that reason? Why am I here? And um, it took me to 27. But at 27, it was the weirdest thing. It is. It, it's like when the light turns on. It's whether or not you choose to see that the light is on or off, because if you're blind, you're not going to be able to tell. But if you have your eyes open and you have your vision, you're able to tell when things shift, you know, and that's, I think that's a big thing. Uh, a lot, I've had people say to me when they hear about my story or, or when I speak and they'll go, oh gosh, you know, I'm so sorry for you. And I said, why? Because I know statistically this is going to happen. Why not me? Why not me? Just like, why not me for making money? Why not me for having a marriage of 28 years? Why not me for having three amazing kids that I really actually like are good human beings? Why not me for having beautiful grandbabies? Why not me for, you know, getting to 53 and not having cancer? If I'm going to have all the good things, <laughs> you have to balance it. So I had to take something. And here's the reality. I, I took the weight for somebody who may not have made it to 53. I statistically took the hit for somebody who may not have made it to 53. So God knew, somebody knew, and higher entity knew, okay, this one over here, the crazy one, she's going to have pink hair when she's 53, she's going to pierce her nose at 18, her mother's going to have a cardiac over it. That one, that one can take it. 
because there's, I believe that there is a purpose behind everything. And I do think that what doesn't break you builds you greater and bigger and stronger and gives you the opportunity to speak up and be the, be that shield for others, be that, that strength for others when, when they need them, when they say, I rather die than ever go to another hospital. And yet yeah. instead of sitting there and berating them and not stepping into their shoes, you go, can you share with me why and how can I be of service? Right. And I love that. I love that. That's service with no judgment. It's meeting them at the level of where they can receive your help. And we always see people should receive it at our level. Sometimes. Yeah. Right. So in, so for me, sacred space is my higher self reached toward her higher self. And it was in that sacred space where she was able to feel seen. So that's what I mean that this idea of sacred space is actually very different than the way I was trained as a therapist, the way I was trained as a nurse, the way I was trained as whatever it was. There was another tool in my toolbox that I needed and I didn't realize I needed it. So, um, what what an incredible journey it has been so far. And every morning I wake up and I'm like, I have no idea what today is going to be like, but I got to tell you, I know it's going to be fun and I'm going to get surprised and I'm going to just feel alive. So, so let's, let's, so surprise and alive. You are now, no, no surprise here, actually. You're, you know, <laughs> being published. Tell me a little bit about your book. So Beyond Trauma Drama, Cultivating the Sacred Nature of Families to Heal is unfolding as you and I are speaking, hoping to come out in the fall. Um, so a lot of that infinite intelligence and um, understanding my own power, feeling, feeling my own power, making sure my energy centers are open and traveling to all the generations of my own family. I have two granddaughters as well. Navigating it just to make sure it feels truthful. It feels right. It's something I'm actually able to do. It's something that I'm experiencing personally in my own family, generations of trauma and violence and this and that. So um, just even in the unfolding and the writing, I'm getting some great insight. So I'll be as excited as anyone to read it. It's kind of how I feel about <laughs> it. Um, and so just even the creative phase has been fantastic. So hopefully in the fall, but I'll make sure everybody gets the news. And when it comes out, it'll be just the way it's meant to be. And it's an honor to be the person that has the opportunity to write about our beautiful, brilliant families in this way, in a very empowered, loving, spacious, sacred way. And I, I do wish for every person to take the pieces out of this that feels right for them at this moment. Um, as the eldest of four girls, I, I, I see things one way, my sisters see things the other way, but I wish nothing but the best for each of them. And I know that we all are traveling a road in, you know, everybody's going the same direction, but we all got a different color car. We all got a different color, you know, different speed we're going. We're going to get there. Yep. But uh, I think that you are, um, you know, a great traffic conductor getting people. Let's come on over. Come down. Here we are. Yeah, that we way. You don't, need to, don't need to U-turn. Don't need to take the bypass. Don't need to do any of that. Just stay just one more mile Steady. towards just the stay. direction of your dreams. Yeah. They're yeah. waiting for you. They're waiting for you. Where can people find you, follow you, learn from you, lean into your space? So people can reach out to me, to me through one sacred family at gmail.com or one sacred family dot com. <laughs> one sacred there. family. Yeah. I am going to try and put that up here on the screen, folks. Um, let me just see if I can real quickly grab this and see what we got. Ah, there we go. One sacred family 
www.thepowerofpositivity.com. All right, folks. So in closing, I'd like you to close the show out for us. Uh, a quote. I collect quotes, stories of resilience, and great books to read. That's my favorite thing to do. That's the legacy I'm leaving for people. So share with us your quote, Dr. Kelly. I sure will. Are you ready? I am ready. You've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. <laughs> Linda the Big Witch, the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I love that. See, I said it the wrong way earlier, but that is, it's, it's within you. I love it. We are so, two, two peas in a pod. Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. That's yes. it, my friend. That That's is it, it, my friends. Well, Dr. Kelly, like I said, I, I think you and I could do a weekend uh, and just literally, it, it would never be a lull. There would be nothing but growth and expansion. I uh, am thankful uh, that you are sharing your insight and your journeys and your knowledge through this book that you're, you're uh, putting out. Um, and, and I encourage people that if you're feeling a little lost, if you're feeling a little concerned, lean in. The information is out there. Don't go and go down the scroll hole of all the negative and scary crap on right. Facebook and stuff, elevate yourself, find the people who are speaking languages of positivity, speaking languages of, of future instead of demise. Uh, we are all here. We are all here. You have it within you to have the life that you were destined to have before the world got in the way. And uh, so I want to again, thank everybody for joining me. And joining Dr. Kelly here today on Kim Talks Resilience. Uh, if you do feel your resiliency is ever lagging, I want you to stop and I want you to listen and lean into the resilient community. And do grab your uh, all access, your magazine. Everything is at resilientgift.com. I'm not asking for credit cards. I will never charge for this. This is the stories, the information, and the insight, and the wisdom of all the amazing women I am speaking to because I believe there's a better tomorrow for everybody because you, you do deserve it. You, you are worth it, and you can do this. Until next time. Do take care of yourself.